Did you go to university? If you did, where did you go? Does it matter? Well, there is a university stereotype out there, and it may be confirmed. It's about Durham, which is like one of the fancy ones. Mm. One of the good ones to go, apparently. Absolutely. Well, it, it does seem to be full of Oxford and Cambridge uh, rejects. According to the stereotype, a student newspaper in Durham has been trawling through admission statistics and they've revealed that over the past five years, an average of 43% of new Durham students had failed to get into either Oxford or Cambridge. Yeah, well, let's talk to Jack Edwards, who's now an online content creator. Oh, sounds very fancy, that, right, Jack. Um, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> oh, no, fair enough. What do you, I mean, I've got to be honest, I'd not heard of this stereotype yeah. before, but then I didn't go to Durham. But, yeah. I mean... Seems a bit unfair to me, I think. Uh, I think it's almost like a bit of a running joke. It's a bit of fun. You know, when um, COVID started to spread, people said it would only make it to Durham if it got rejected by Oxford and Cambridge <laughs> first. You know? I think it's one of those things, the statistics do speak for themselves. Um, at least we can say almost half and not most students are rejected. Um, yeah. We can stick with that one. I mean, I guess it, what it does show is that, that people... Are, I mean, it's, it's good news for Durham, I would have thought, in that people who are applying for Oxbridge are also the type of people who are applying for Durham as well, which is yeah. no, no doubt why it's got a good reputation. <laughs> exactly. I think there's a lot of things you can be ashamed for in this life, and being ambitious is not one of them. Um, applying to a top university is not something you should ever be embarrassed about, you know. Um, and the, the reality is that when you apply to university, you apply to five institutions, and so the people who... Oxbridge Attract will also be applying to Durham, to Edinburgh, to St Andrews, universities like that. And so it's inevitable that some people won't make it into Oxford and Cambridge who have to be a bit more picky with who they accept because the reality is that most people will put it as their first choice mm. and they don't have the space for that. Isn't yeah. it funny, we're talking about pressure on young people and the idea that just going to Durham University <laughs> as opposed to Oxford and Cambridge could be seen as a failure. Oh, I mean, I was super proud to, to get into Durham and being surrounded by ambitious people was such a, a privilege to get to go there. And to be honest with you, Durham has bigger fish to fry. I mean, in, in terms of its admission process, um, it has the lowest intake of state school students in the UK. I just don't think really? that, that um, how many people were rejected by what, Oxbridge is what, its biggest issue. No, why do you <laughs> think that is? Why do you think it's not got a big state school intake? I, I, I don't know whether people see themselves there because it has a reputation of being very white, very middle class perhaps snobby, there's been a few, fair few scandals with representation, and I think that that means that people feel they shouldn't apply because they don't see themselves in that institution. Mm. Um, there's a really, really great um, society called the 93% Club who represent state school students at Durham and a lot of different universities in the UK as well, where they'll allow students to come and get professional LinkedIn photos taken, introduce them to industry leaders and just give them those opportunities that they may not have had otherwise and, and kind of level the playing field a little bit, you know? Do you think having come out of university uh, a little more recently than Stephen and I... Uh, uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> do you think it's still something is worthwhile doing? It's very expensive. It can be a lot of um, spare time and very yeah. little tutor time, particularly <laughs> the last two years. Yeah. But would you still recommend it? Would you think you got a lot out of it? Oh, for sure. And I, I feel like I use my degree every day in what I do now. Which so, was what? Which is English literature. So oh, now. Oh, there you go. So I now work in, um, I, I think it's a long-term investment into being good at pub quizzes. That's my kind of yeah. <laughs> that's the sales pitch, I think. Um, but yeah, I work in publishing now and I make videos online about books um, and reading diversely from a range of intersectional authors and trying to go a bit beyond the curriculum um, as well. And so, yeah, I think that Durham equipped me with, like, the, the, with the tools um, to articulate myself confidently and feel like I kind of knew the basics. And you haven't oh, yeah. got a chip on your shoulder because you didn't go to Oxford or Cambridge. Yeah, straight for the jugular there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> did you apply? I did. I, I applied to Oxford, yeah. And, I, and so I am completely, um, unashamedly, one of your statistics. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, Oxford's old, loss was Durham's gain. Yeah, how old are you, Jack? I'm 23. 23. Yeah. Right. What do you make, then, of all these... And, and it's talked a lot about the sort of cancel culture at universities these days. Mm. It, do you do you agree with what has gone on over the past few years with, with people being cancelled, or do you think universities should be a place where in fact, the widest views can be listened to and debated? I, and I, I think that they are great places where the, the, those things do happen. I think it's about where it's appropriate to have those conversations, where it's a, kind of, a safe space where everyone going into that room knows that that's what's going to be discussed. And freedom of speech does not mean freedom from accountability. Those yeah. are not the same thing. So I think that... 
everyone is free to share their views, but you can't call it cancel culture when people disagree with you. Mm. So <laughs> no, but that's that's the thing. I don't think it's it's because it's not really about. It's, it, it's the cancel culture side of it is when they, they stop those views being heard, which I mean, and they, I just wonder as someone, especially because you, you know, the, the way you've, you sort of work within within the language and within literature and, and publishing, how important is it that we listen to views that we actually don't agree with? I think it's really important not to end up in an echo chamber um, so that you're still you know, being surrounded by views that aren't necessarily the ones that you originally had. That's how we learn, that's how we grow. Um, I don't think every opinion that I had five years ago is an opinion I would have now. So it's, it's a, that's part of the academia, right? That's part of the learning experience mm. and the education um, is kind of working out what, what you believe in. I just think it's about who you're, who's, who feels safe in those institutions. And if you are making someone feel uncomfortable in the place that they're studying, then, mm. you know, it, is that really appropriate? I would mm. say probably not. Can, we, can I just ask for your reflections, Jack, on the previous conversation we had with Joe Hemmings there about the, uh, the kind of mental health pressure, the mental health crisis, as it's called, we have in this country. What's your take on it as a, as a young person? I think that we care a lot about physical fitness. If someone had a broken leg, they probably wouldn't run a marathon. So I think that, um, I, I think that we're starting, hopefully, as young people to view our mental health in the same way. And I think we're just being equipped with the vocabulary to explain those complicated emotions. So I think talking about it is a really important thing, especially because male suicide rates especially are so high. I think that we can't overlook that. And I've worked in, on Freshers' Week, moving people in at university. And, and it's really hard for some people, you know, moving alone across the country. Um, Durham, for me, was a very long way from home because I grew up in Sussex. Um, so... People do struggle, and it's really important not to bottle those mm -hmm. feelings up because. But why yeah. are they struggling? Because I don't, I don't think we struggled. Well, I didn't. When I went to Nottingham Trent, I, I didn't struggle. No, and I was, and I, I love my family very much. But it, it was, I was just so excited to be getting on with it. It was, it felt like a really, really exciting time. So I didn't struggle. Yeah, but I can understand. I can understand how some. It's a people... big adjustment, isn't yeah, it? For yeah, for sure. And there's a lot of there's a lot of pressure. There's uh, it's uh, you know information overload in that first yeah. week, and yeah. and it's so disorientating. I think that you know um, if you've never had to deal with it, then lucky you. You yeah. know, um, yeah. that's and if and if you haven't had to think about those things, then then that's great. But. Um, it doesn't mean other people have. See, we can yeah. tell, Jack, that you're a well-educated man because we've, <laughs> we've dragged you in here and we've talked to you about every subject we've been talking about this hour and you just deal with it all. <laughs> Keep on oh. coming. You see, that's a Durham education for you. You Isn't can't it? argue with that. Jack Edwards, it's really good to talk to you. Thank, Thank you very you so much. much. Thanks, Indeed. Jack. See, that's what I like. I think young people do get a bit of a kicking at times. Oh, every young person I meet is lovely. I mean, they are lovely. I